Hey, what is, I think I just waved. I think I, I think I literally just waved to you guys. What is going on, fan clan? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Danny Phantom. My voice does not sound great, so bear with me as I fight through this. I'm doing this all for you guys, all for you guys. This is Scarlet and Violet 151 week. We are two days away from the release of Scarlet and Violet 151. I am so, I am still stoked. I have opened up over a thousand booster packs of this set, and I am still in love with it. You guys are gonna absolutely love it. I'm literally trying to get as much information as I can out there so that way you guys know the best way to approach spending your collection dollars. So what I've been doing is kind of compiling data. We're going to have a full pull rate video this upcoming Friday. So in just a couple days, um, you can watch it before you go out, buy stuff, search around, things like that. But uh, full pull rate da data will be available for you guys. Tomorrow we're going to talk about pre-order pricing as far as singles goes, maybe things to kind of lay off on. Uh, and then today we're going to go over the master set. The master set took me a long time to finish, way longer than I originally anticipated. I thought when I originally looked at the set list and things like that and basing my decisions off of what we experienced so far in Scarlet and Violet especially with Obsidian Flames I thought okay this set isn't going to be too bad there's not a whole lot of cards in the set there's not a whole lot of special illustration rares in the set I think maybe five six hundred packs we should be able to get it and then as I started opening product if you haven't watched last Friday's video where I opened up an entire case of Elite Trainer Boxes I only pulled one special illustration rare out of that entire case and I know that other other content creators other people who have opened the set. I've had much better luck, but honestly, like bad luck happens. There are times where you have bad luck. And I thought, okay, this might take me a little bit more than what I originally anticipated when it came to opening this set. I don't think pull rates are going to be as good as what we're used to. We opened up a case of the binder collection, a case of the poster collection. We opened up an entire display of booster bundles. And while pull rates got a little bit better for us, we got a little bit luckier. You were still looking at about three hits for every nine to 10 packs, which is what comes in an ETB. You get nine packs in an ETB. So three hits per nine packs, one out of every three packs, basically, which isn't bad. But when you compare it to sets in the past, like what we saw with Crown Zenith, not quite as good. Now, the difference between this set and Crown Zenith is there were a lot of hits in Crown Zenith. You had the entire Galarian Gallery. You had EXs. You had V-Stars. You had V-Maxes. You had the Secret Rares. It was a huge set. It was a huge set when it came to Ultra Rare. So the likelihood of pulling more, the variance had to be higher. Your pull rates are going to look a little bit better than what we saw with Scarlet and Violet 151. Now, usually I'll have like a little slideshow. You don't just have to stare at my ugly mug. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't have one prepared right now because there was, and that, that's a good thing, because there wasn't that much wrong with this set. Scarlet and Violet 151 is actually really, really good. There's not a whole lot of negative things that I have to say about. And I'm going to flip you guys around. We're going to look at the master set in just a second here. Uh, but I do want to open up one pack for you guys so I can kind of demonstrate the only real flaws uh, that I saw in this set. The first flaw that I saw in the set was the code card oftentimes, many times, uh, was like bent in the corner. So it was kind of like that. So that was a little weird. Like, I don't expect this card to be in good condition. Like, and this one doesn't really matter that much. The only time you really want to grade a code card is if it's blank or if there's a big issue with it. So for the most part, a bent card right there, not really, uh, not really the end of the world. That doesn't matter. What matters here is the, the guts of the pack, right? So a lot of times I would open up a pack and uh, it would be upside down at the beginning. So the first card would be backwards. I thought maybe that would be like a sign for good luck. That wasn't necessarily the case uh, ever. That was never the case, actually. Uh, but a lot of times I would see a backwards card. Sometimes the second card in the set would be, uh, or in the booster pack, would be upside down. So it would be like this, and I'd be like, well, why is this card upside down? That's weird. This is a normal thing that Pokemon has been experiencing for years, for a long time. It is very normal. So if you do buy loose packs or anything like that, just be careful who you buy them from. I wouldn't worry necessarily about resealed packs or anything like that, especially for a set such as this that's brand new. I don't think there's going to be a lot of uh, people that are out there resealing packs of Scarlet and Violet 151, like what you saw with Pokemon 151. Hollow Energies did seem to come uh, quite frequently, one out of basically every three packs. I still have to add these into my master set. We pulled multiple copies of every single one. Uh, the other copy, or the other pack that I have here, this was a pack at one point in time. I no longer have the actual uh, pack with me, uh, but this took a very long time to pull. So this is the demi Demigod pack that people are so crazy about. Uh, this took about 1,300 packs uh, of me opening in order to pull my first demigod pack. So they do exist. And that was a question that I got a lot during the stream yesterday because we didn't pull one during the stream. I didn't pull any during my case opening of ETBs. I didn't pull any during my YouTube videos opening product. And there wasn't a whole lot of content creators that had pulled any demigod packs. So it was a lot of people kind of going back and forth. Do these exist? Are these actually something that happened? After the stream yesterday, I went to try and pull the last card from my master set. I opened up about 40 more packs. And finally, uh, I pulled this. 
Yes, so it was pretty crazy. I got very taken aback when I saw it, but it was a Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, and Venusaur, so the entire line. So I would assume we saw kind of like uh, bits and, and previews of somebody opening up one that had an entire Charizard line. Uh, I would assume it is very difficult, maybe one of every 1,000 packs. It took me 1,300 to pull my first one, uh, but you'll get maybe a, a big trio. So either the Bulbasaur line, the Squirtle line, or the Charmander line, but it is more than possible. I posted a picture of this on my Instagram. You can find me at Danny.Phantom. I also posted it on Twitter. You can find me there at Danny underscore underscore O. There's a little shameless plug, plug for you, but it's a normal pack. Like it's it's normal size, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, and then eight, nine, and ten. So ten cards. Uh, the difference is you don't get a reverse hollow, you don't get a hollow rare. Uh, it, this is your reverse hollows are basically made up of your two hits. And this Ivysaur would typically be in that second reverse hollow slot. That's where you normally would find uh, your special illustration rare or your illustration rares. Instead, the special illustration rare is moved to the uh, to the EX spot or to the the hit spot, and then your illustration rare is still in. In the same spot and then your first reverse hollow also features an illustration rare so that is possible to pull it is just very very unlikely so it will take a lot of packs now i could have just been super unlucky you can let me know in the comment section down below as time goes on uh in future videos how many packs it takes you to pull a demigod pack maybe you'll just get lucky you'll buy an etb from target and it'll be in there i hope that is the case uh but it took me about 1300 packs in order to pull it but uh i am i am confirmed this is fanny firmed fanny firmed it is possible to pull a demigod pack so we're going to go over the master set in just a second first of all i do want to talk about this binder so this is the binder collection uh this is a new product that comes out this friday also along with the booster bundle along with the etbs along with the poster collection so this is just a nine up binder it holds 360 cards you can fit 360 cards in here. So if you want to complete a master set, a master set in my mind is where you have every single card that you can pull out of a booster pack. So all all uh, the commons and uncommons in reverse hollow and in regular fashion, plus all the ultra rares, all the secret rares, all those good things. In this set that unfortunately would also, uh, that would also mean the holographic energy cards would have their own spot in the master set, despite the fact that they don't necessarily have a numbering system on them. So if you don't want to include that, that's fine. Then you can use this binder. There are 360 cards in the set if you include all regulars and reverses and ultra rares. So you could technically stack them side by side throughout the the entirety of uh, of the binder and you would fill up literally the whole binder with your last gold card i think it's the psychic energy uh your last gold card uh being right here that would end it however it's not necessarily how I do all of my master sets. I also like to include some promos. And like I said, I like to include hollow energies. And because of that, I had to upgrade. Uh, this is just an Ultra Pro binder. So this is just a four up Ultra Pro binder. It's got room for a lot more uh, goodies in it. So here is this kind of right here. It's not as easy to see if I show it off here, but here's this right here. It's just, just an Ultra Pro binder. Typically I'll use Dragon Vault binders, especially the new Dragon Vault binders that have the actual set uh, number on them. Like for Obsidian Flames, we used a, dra uh, we used a Vault Xbox binder sorry vault x binder that showed sv3 which is really cool they don't have one of those at least not that i know of for half set so they don't have one for uh what would be scarlet and violet 151 at least they haven't announced one or made one yet they have the new white one that's coming out which is super dope and super cool uh but for the time being i just use this one also when i like to make my master sets i do like using the etb sleeves typically i haven't been showing those off but i was able to do it uh with this entire with uh this entire master set so i laid everything out now it took me 800 packs to pull the majority of the master set. When the master set, when I got to pack number 800, I was like, holy buckets, this should be done. I was missing three cards still. I was missing the special illustration rare Erica. Uh, Erica, I could not find for a very long time. I was missing a reverse hollow polywirl. Polyworld was like impossible to find for me. For some reason, I did not find it until after 800 packs were opened. I actually got to the point where I was looking at the book and I was like, is there actually a reverse hollow Polyworld in here? Because I have not found it at all. And you get two reverse hollows in every pack just about. So I had a lot of reverse hollows packed up and there were so many different copies, duplicates, triplicates. You know, there were some reverse hollows that I had eight, 10 copies of, which brings me to a whole nother point about batching, which I don't want to get into, but it 
was very, very strange. Uh, Erica, I didn't pull until like pack number 900. It took me almost a thousand packs to pull that Erica. It took me a very long time. I only pulled one of them. I only pulled one special illustration rare Charizard. But if you watch the stream yesterday, and this is why batching gets me. This is why batching is so confusing to me. I didn't really think it was a thing until the beginning of Scarlet and Violet. I opened up multiple cases of Elite Trainer boxes for yesterday's stream where we just did Scarlet and Violet 151 for the pack break stream. We opened up five Erica's invitations in 500 packs. We opened up six special il illustration Charizards in 500 packs. So it took me a thousand packs to pull only one copy of each of those. And again, we'll look at full pull rate data this upcoming Friday, uh, but that's luck. I mean, luck. I was just very unlucky or batching is a thing because it was very strange to pull so many of those cards. And I pulled a lot of like Blastoise special illustration rares, but yesterday during the stream, we didn't pull many at all. Very, very strange. Um, you can let me know in the comment section down below what you think, but this is an entire master set of Scarlet and Violet 151. So you've got the Charizard down there. I really like putting the regular art next to the reverse hollow. I know that's not necessarily everybody's cup of tea because they like keeping their binders uh, a little bit smaller. So they'll stack the reverse hollow on top of the regular card. I just like the two uh, looking hand in hand together. Part of the problem is, is then you get some uh, cards that are, are off off page. Like we have the regular Raticate down here, but the reverse hollow doesn't fit on that page. So it has to go on the next page. Unfortunately, there's no perfect way to do it. It's really just what makes you happy and what, what you think looks best. Uh, and I just happen to like doing the reverse hollow after the regular art, whether it's a, a regular common, uncommon card or a hollow rare. Uh, so nothing really worth noting on these first several pages. We have the Arbok EX that we just passed. The Ninetales EX is down here at the bottom. Really cool looking set. I love the artwork, even the commons and uncommons like that Jigglypuff right there. Zubat, really kind of a throwback to the tunnel uh, as you play in the contour region. It looks so beautiful. Gloom, Vile Plume, the whole storyline right there. Really, really cool looking cards. Artwork is just uh, fantastic. Scarlet and Violet 151 was the first time in a really long time where I caught myself just staring at the artwork of common and uncommon cards quite a bit. I haven't done that as much uh, and it, since probably Lost Origin. Lost Origin was probably the last set where I really studied uh, a lot of them. Obviously, there's a lot of story that goes behind. There's that Reverse Hello Poly World, which took me 800 packs to pull. I hope it does not take you guys anywhere near that that amount. Uh, the Kadabra, which is so cool. The whole story behind Kadabra. Kadabra's been through, obviously, so much uh, to be to be back in the hobby, back in the game is super cool. So very excited uh, to see uh, to see uh, Kadabra back in it. Victory Bell up there. Golem EX down at the bottom. We haven't seen a Golem EX Ultra Rare for a, a very long time. Golem, a very cool card. Then we've got a lot of other OGs, obviously, on that page right there. Uh, just go through this page real quick because there's not really a whole lot of note uh, on any of these pages. I'm sorry I didn't adjust my camera, so it's a little bit difficult uh, to see a lot of this stuff. But there's the Gengar line down there. That Gengar is super cool. That dude's definitely up to something uh, absolutely crazy. Uh, it took me a long time to pull the Reverse Hollow Krabby as well. That was the second to last Reverse Hollow that I needed. That probably took close to 700 packs. But when you have a set size that's full of common and uncommon cards, which equal about 165 cards, uh, you're going. it's going to take you a while to pull some of the Reverse Hollows. And unfortunately, that poly world. Uh, I tell you, it just took absolutely forever. There's the Kangaskhan EX over there, which is uh, very cool to see Kangaskhan getting some love. Uh, again, we didn't have a V card of Kangaskhan. Jinx EX is going to be at the bottom. I love the star U line. The star me looks really cool as well with kind of like the, the coloring in the background with the coral uh, looks super cool. There's that Jinx down there. We've got Magikarp and Gyarados. Uh, very, very angry Gyarados. Uh, over there, and then we've got. Uh, I think this will be the last page. The big difference here is that they're not uh, they're not identified, you know, on the page by their typing. Which usually, uh, when you have set numbers at the bottom, it goes based off of typing, where you'll have, you know, grass first, and then water, and then fire. These are all by Pokedex numbers, so it's a little bit more difficult to kind of sort through your cards and plan out a master set. As we saw the Zapdos EX, there's that Mewtwo. Obviously, once we get the Ultra Pro or the Ultra Pro, the uh, Ultra Premium Collection promos, those will go in here as well. Uh, which is another reason why I wanted to use the bigger binder. Here's the rest of the trainer cards over here, uh, leftovers, and then we move into the trainer gallery cards. So we've got Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, and then at the bottom here, Charmander, Charmeleon, Squirtle, and there's War Turtle right there. This will be like the best page right here because this is all filled up uh, with just tons of stuff. Caterpie, uh, Pikachu, that's such a cool Pikachu. There's Nidoking, Psyduck, uh, Poliwhirl, which took me a long time to pull, Machoke, 
Tangela and Mr. Mime. And at the bottom here, we've got Ammonite, Dragonair, the full art, Venus RDX and Charizard RDX. I actually really enjoy uh, the outlines of the full arts. I think they're super cool. Ninetales EX, uh, this is the card that I could not pull to save my life. I don't know why. Uh, I don't know why. We did not pull it in the first eight, 900 packs that I opened. And then we did not pull it at all yesterday during the stream. We opened 500 packs yesterday on stream. We pulled everything except the Ninetales EX and the Jinx EX down here. Uh, everybody's trying to guess which one I hadn't pulled yet because I told everybody one of these full arts I still haven't pulled yet. Uh, Ninetales EX. It took me forever. About 1,300 packs is what it took me to pull uh, at everything. You know, 1,300 packs that I opened. When it came to my own personal collection, it took me about uh, almost 1,000 packs to open up that Nine Tails EX, which is absolutely insane. Variance is a huge, huge thing. You know, I pulled multiple copies of the Wigglytuff, multiple copies of the Charizard, but I just could not find uh, the Nine Tails EX to save my life, which was so annoying. There's that Mew EX at the bottom. Super clean, super cool looking. And then here's the last page over here uh, featuring the full art trainers and the special illustrationers. Again, I mean, there's only seven special illustrations in the set and only three gold cards in the set so it's not by any means a massive set but it is much more difficult to master to complete than uh, obsidian flames obsidian flames are getting about 12 hits per booster box which this is pretty similar to that uh, it just feels a little bit more difficult uh, for some reason like the variance just hasn't been there so far with the set but it's an absolute blast to open i hope you guys enjoy it i hope you love it i know you will uh, if you appreciate the content please hit that subscribe button down below leave a like leave a comment let me know what you think how you do master sets whatever you want to say i really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch i don't know why i couldn't find the nine tails it took me forever uh, but i finally found it uh but thank you so much for being here uh the likes and comments go a really long way for the algorithm and help share the channel uh get the channel out there more but regardless thank you just for taking the time to watch i really appreciate you guys we'll be back tomorrow with another video until then guys peace